with market power and efficiency, we're going to talk about two types of efficiency, allocative and productive. Let's begin. Allocative efficiency means our production is allocated correctly. Production matches the consumption preferences. Every good or service is produced up to the point where the last unit provides a marginal benefit to consumers equal to the marginal cost of producing. Another way we can think of allocative efficiency is that the marginal rate of transformation is equal to the marginal rate of substitution, or in general equilibrium terms, we have output efficiency. When we have allocative efficiency, we know that price will equal marginal cost. You can think of this in our general equilibrium terms once again. The marginal rate of substitution has to equal the marginal rate of transformation. The marginal rate of substitution is equal to the price ratio for the consumers between the two goods. That marginal rate of substitution has to be equal to the marginal rate of transformation. The marginal rate of transformation has to be equal to the marginal cost of producing one unit in terms of another unit. The marginal rate of transformation is the slope of our production possibilities frontier. And the marginal rate of substitution is the slope of our indifference curve. If these two are not equal, we do not have allocative efficiency. But why does this matter for market power analysis? Well, when we have market power, we have a monopoly, we know that the price is going to be greater than the marginal cost. And when the price is not equal to the marginal cost, we know that the marginal rate of substitution is not going to be equal to the marginal rate of transformation. And thus, when we have market power and we have a monopoly, we will not have allocative efficiency. You see this on the graph shown. With perfect competition and no market power, we would be at the green indifference curve, optimizing within the market. When we have market power, we will have something that looks more like the purple indifference curve, where the marginal rate of substitution is not equal to the marginal rate of transformation. When the price, here think marginal rate of substitution, is greater than the marginal cost, here think the marginal rate of transformation, we end up producing less X than we otherwise would have. And we can say that the allocation of social resources is less than optimal. Another way to see the problem of allocative efficiency within a monopoly is to look at the supply and demand. Here we'll look at a constant marginal cost monopoly. We will use this graph to be our constant marginal cost monopoly with a downward sloping demand and a marginal revenue at half the slope of that demand curve and marginal cost as a straight line showing constant marginal costs. It will be beneficial to compare this constant marginal cost monopoly to a competitive industry. We can use the same cost assumptions and the same demand assumptions and see what happens in a competitive industry to compare that to the monopoly case. In a competitive industry, we will set price equals marginal cost, where the marginal cost curve crosses the demand curve will be our quantity. Here we can see that there is no producer surplus, and the entire yellow shaded region is consumer surplus. When we have a monopoly, we will not be at the optimal quantity where marginal cost crosses the demand curve. Instead, with this market power, we set the quantity at the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. At this monopoly quantity, the producers then set the price at this where this quantity hits the demand curve. This allows producers to take producer surplus of the black rectangle as shown. Consumers will still have consumer surplus shown here as the purple triangle. What we need to remember, however, is that this black area, this addition of producer surplus, is the transfer of monopoly profit. But this is not where allocative efficiency comes in. It is not because the producers gain that we have 
inefficiency in terms of allocative efficiency in a monopoly market. The inefficiency comes, up, comes about because we have deadweight loss, here shown as the yellow triangle. Remember the example of why taxes are bad from the Landsberg reading. This is from allocative efficiency. It's from transactions that should take place, but do not. The transactions between QM and QO should take place, but they do not. In this situation, we could potentially increase consumer welfare without reducing consumer profits. If we produced at QO, the consumers would be willing, theoretically, and they potentially could, uh, transfer some resources and pay off the producers, the black rectangle area, and still be made better off because they could have both the purple triangle and the yellow triangle. In both of these diagrams, we can see that we do not have the socially optimal allocation of resources. Let's turn now to productive efficiency. With productive efficiency, we're producing goods with the optimal combination of inputs. In general equilibrium terms, this is called input efficiency. A firm is said to be productively efficient when it is producing at the lowest point on the average total cost curve. Standard monopoly theory does not suggest that we use a mix of inputs that is not efficient. It does not predict productive inefficiencies. So while standard monopoly theory does predict that we will have allocative inefficiencies, it does not predict that we will have productive inefficiencies. We will produce at our lowest costs. We just might not produce the right quantity and thus allocate the society's resources optimally. So there's one really important implication from this idea that a standard monopoly theory predicts allocative inefficiency, but not productive inefficiency. There could potentially be a trade-off between allocative and productive efficiency when it comes to thinking about how we treat monopolies. Imagine a situation where we have an allocatively inefficient monopoly. What we'd like to do is see allocative efficiency in this industry. We could be worried about market power, and thus we could regulate the industry to allow it to be more competitive and have more producers producing. And then we could get a case where we have allocative efficiency. That could be the goal. But what we could be doing is taking the low cost production of good X, shown by the black production possibilities frontier, with a monopoly that has allocative inefficiency. And we could be striving to make it allocatively efficient like the red production possibilities frontier. But when we move to the red possi production possibilities frontier and we have allocative efficiency, we also have to realize that we could be productively less efficient. The production possibilities with the red curve are further in that means X is a higher cost of production. So while we are allocatively efficient, we are now productively much less efficient than we were in the first case with the monopoly on the black production possibilities frontier. In this case, we could ask the question, is it better to have a high cost producer set price equals marginal cost and have allocative efficiency or to have a low cost producer with price greater than marginal cost. Well, which is better? In all actuality, it depends. With the picture that we created, it was actually better to have the monopoly in place. One efficient but uncompetitive producer may actually be better for consumers than thousands of inefficient producers. So there we have it, some insights about allocative and productive efficiency when it comes to market power.